Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess from Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be talking about the void space. And this video was actually inspired, number one, by my Sacred Circle Tarot School because we were diving into the number nine, but, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but also my experiences. Divine timing is everything. Divine timing is always at play. The universe is always doing its thing. And it was so interesting because I entered into the void space a third time in my life, oh my gosh. And while I was in it, I was teaching about it in my sacred circle when we were diving into the number nine. And it was bringing me so much enlightenment into that current space that I was in. And I knew that I needed to share it with you. I did share with you guys in very light detail that I wasn't right. Like I just wasn't feeling right. I wasn't feeling right for quite some time. Logically, it didn't make sense. Spiritually, I felt like I was being called to go within. I didn't want to share it. I was very emotional. I was very sensitive. I was very guarded. I was very protected and protecting myself and spirit was working to protect me. And that was just where I was at. But I did tell you guys that that was, I, did, I don't want to say that I hinted at it, but I was, Every, I would like sprinkle it in, in there that I was going through something and what I was going through was that void space. When I felt myself nearing the end, that's when I started speaking about it a little bit more. And the reason why I was so private about it is because it is so vulnerable to be in that space. It's not that I didn't want to share it with you guys. It was that I had to go through it alone. And that is the key component in a lot of ways that is connected to the void space and again we'll talk about it the times when i did mention that this is something that i was going through you guys were like oh my god just please 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 let's talk about this because this is what it is that i'm going through so i hope it's not too late again divine timing is always in works and i had to be very very respectful of my own spiritual journey and things that i was going through before i just come out and share everything with you in that in that moment but this is what we're going to be talking about today which is the void space now what is the void space the void space is that moment in your life where you are literally stuck in this suspension for me personally I kept pulling the hanged man I kept pulling the hanged man I was pulling it before I even entered into the void space and I was definitely pulling it when I was in it but it's this moment in your life where things just are black things are bleak they're very shadow you're you very much are sitting in the shadow aspects within yourself the shadow realms this is not a bad thing everything serves a, a purpose and everything has you know this balance to it this interconnectedness to it so there are moments in your life where you're gonna have some high highs there are moments of your life where there can be low lows what I want to say is the void space is not a, a point in your life where you are not experiencing highs you can experience these highs, these moments of success, these moments of um, wins, you know, like when things just seem to be going your way. The void space doesn't mean that you are not experiencing success. It is a feeling within you that even with the success or even a low, like a depression or whatever, it just doesn't amount to anything. It just feels, I don't wanna say empty, but it feels like there's more to it and you are in a space where it doesn't matter how good it is or how bad it is. You you need more from, from the experience. You need more from yourself. It feels like you're lost in the abyss. It feels like you're energetically kind of drifting. And that's, that, that's the thing that I really wanna point out before I dive into the video even more is that the void space it makes sense when you're experiencing depression and sadness or you're mourning the loss of something or someone and that is the, the cycle that you're in within your life where you could be triggered into the void space, that emptiness, that floating, like what's gonna happen next, who am I, where am I going, what am I doing, feeling kind of lost, feeling like you've disconnected from your true north in a lot of ways. Um, so sometimes it can be triggered by an outside circumstance where there is a loss that makes you go into that void space cycle on the outside that makes sense when you're in that void space because it's like okay well i'm here because i experienced loss i'm feeling depressed because of this these certain things that have happened but when you have success and things seem to be going your way and the world is celebrating you and you are you just have these major milestones you're hitting your goals and you enter into the void space 
that is really mind-boggling because you're like, I have all of this external stuff, all of these things seem to be doing really well. Why do I feel so lost? Why do I feel so disconnected from my path? And basically what the void space is there for, it's there to give you a moment to connect within yourself, to reconnect with the divine, and to find your north again, and to find your steps, and also to find this whole complete picture for yourself. What the void space feels like, is so uncomfortable oh my gosh it is so uncomfortable physically emotionally mentally spiritually spiritually you could be the most faith-based person you could have all the faith in the world and it's almost as if one day or over time your faith is lost you are questioning god you're questioning divine you're questioning your belief systems you're questioning are angels real is this fake do I believe in myself? What it, You feel totally disconnected and you do not feel union with the universe. You understand the laws of attraction. You understand the laws of manifestation. You might even be spending your entire life studying it. But when you get into the void space, you start questioning everything. You start questioning yourself. You start questioning the people around you. You just start really start questioning things. It is, it, it's almost as if a light that has been on in your life spiritually turns off it clicks off it can come out of nowhere or it could be something that has happened over time or accumulated over time or it could be an external event that triggers that but either way your faith your spiritual um your spiritual beliefs are going to be tested and again you could be the most faith-based person you could be the most spiritually connected and all of a sudden again it's like someone clicks the light off you're sitting in the dark and you just can't find the divine you can't find god you can't find angels you might be calling out to god calling out to the to the divine calling out to your ancestors calling out to whoever and it just feels like there's no response you're sitting there in silence you're floating and it's not just one day it's usually months there's a connection to the number nine so nine months nine weeks it could be nine years but but I'll talk about that I'll talk about numerology in the um, as we move forward emotionally you could be the most happy person ever and all of a sudden again that light clicks off you're sitting in the dark and you go from being so happy being so fulfilled and all of a sudden it, you feel empty, you feel depressed, you feel totally depleted, you feel totally drained. You could have just had the most amazing miracle thing happen in your life and it bring you to such a space of joy. It's like almost as if you can't even enjoy that pleasure, you can't even enjoy that blessing, you can't enjoy that thing because internally you're in the void space. Emotionally you've entered into the void space and it just feels like emptiness. It feels like an emptiness within your heart. Your heart feels empty. You could be crying, emotionally triggered by certain things. Things that you thought that you released, these old childhood traumas, somehow they resurface. These demons that you had locked in your closet, literally and figuratively, <laughs> could come tumbling out. And you're just like, where is this coming from? I'm actually in a really good space within my life. Things are moving forward. Things are looking forward. Why now? Am I experiencing this now? I thought I had healed from this. I thought I had moved forward. And emotionally, it just comes pouring out. That is um, a sign that you are in the void space. Emotionally, you feel really depressed out of nowhere. It's like your mood just kind of drops. Your, your feelings, they plummet. It's very, very dark. You could have really, really dark thoughts that are not like you. Or you may have experienced those dark th thoughts before. Like you could really... Um, be struggling with depression you could have this need to like end your life honestly and I, we're not really allowed to talk about it in the YouTube world but I have to talk about it at the risk of my video getting demonetized but these are some, some things that you can experience is just feeling just a normal optimistic person normal happy person a no, normal balanced person all of a sudden it's like the light in their life clicks out and it, there's you can't pull them out like you just you can't pull yourself out the same the, the things that used to give you happiness and joy and pleasure now it feels like it's nothing it's useless um, so that's something else too that you can experience within that void space than that a lot of people do experience within that void space the next thing is physically when you enter into the void space your energy is just gone it's depleted you know you could try to do exercise you could try to be active again you could normally be a very highly active person you could normally be someone who's likes to be out and about and celebrating and spending time with friends and spending time with family well all of a sudden you no matter how extroverted you are how introverted you are all of a sudden there you can't get enough time by yourself in fact 
there's an interesting connection where spending time by yourself feels equally good as it does feel really emotional and very bad. You know what I mean? Like it just makes you feel sad and you're just in that space and you're kind of asking questions and deciphering. For some people, it varies. You know, there's different levels of, of extremes to the void space for a lot of people. And by extremes, I mean like you could feel uh, totally disconnected and totally want to remove yourself from others and you know, the people that are around you and it gives you pleasure disconnecting other people it's like you just can't find it in you to pull yourself out and to connect with the world and there's this feeling within you that it's like okay I feel like I need to be here because I have no choice that was another thing too that was coming up is it feels like you have no choice you're really uncomfortable with it you don't like it but there's this feeling a sense that maybe you're supposed to be there but even in that you feel lost and I know that, that sounds really confusing but that's another thing about the void space is that what should make sense doesn't make sense and things are kind of like you know they almost contradict themselves like how can I feel lost but I feel like I'm supposed to be here but even as I'm being here I feel lost it's that weird connection mentally your brain is either it, it really is seeking it's very highly active this is when you are you could have anxiety you could have depression you could have these, um, you know, asking questions, asking questions, needing to journal, needing to talk about it. This is when you want to connect with others. If you do decide to connect with others on a deeper level, those surface level conversations like, hi, how are you? How's your kids? How's the dog? You know, how's work going? It's like, oh, good, good. Everything's good. Everything's great. Those type of surface level conversations will not entertain the void space when you're in the void space. You could be a person who normally is comfortable with talking about light conversations and all of a sudden when you're in the void, that seems so superficial. It seems like a waste of time. You have this sense of time, 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 time. How am I using my time? How am I allocating my time? This has nothing to do with the amount of success and or the amount of failure that you've experienced right before the void space. This void space time that you're in that cycle it can happen at the highest of the highs or it can happen at the lowest of the lows so there isn't like one thing that can happen before that's always guaranteed it could literally be triggered by something or anything but it's just a cycle that you're in in, in that moment in your life so mentally you could go from a space of peace and success and accomplishment and reward and everything is great everything is wonderful to your brain switches and it's like oh my god what do I do next this doesn't feel right I know that I did everything that I was supposed to do I'm so proud of my success but internally I feel like I need to connect and find my true north I feel like yes I'm happy for my success but at the same time there's something that I need to do next and you're asking yourself you're asking yourself those questions you're seeking you're striving you're trying to connect meanwhile you're doing that and you feel disconnected from the divine you feel disconnected from yourself you feel disconnected from your tribe the same people that you've been talking to the same conversations that were fulfilling now all of a sudden they seem meaningless so those are some really intense things to be experiencing when you go into the void but that's what it feels like it's very uncomfortable for a lot of people even as the, uh, a spiritual practitioner a spiritual healer and knowing that this cycle is something that you could be entering into or that you're in it doesn't always feel good and sometimes you don't have clear clarity or clarification and you are allowed to feel uncomfortable no matter how much you can predict it and no matter how much or even if you're new to it and you had no idea that this was something that was going to happen within your life especially if you're a sensitive especially if you're a clairvoyant especially if you're an intuitive especially if you're a healer you are going to have moments where you dive into the void space so basically um, what happens when you're in that void is I don't know if you guys are seeing this and you see this pattern that I've been saying in all of this but it's like the lights that were once on they click off now all of a sudden you're sitting in the dark now how this connects to numerology is the number nine now and I I'm, I don't I try to do my best with doing these videos because I I know that I can jump ahead of myself and I try to like piece everything together you know I'm a Virgo I like to have a plan but I get so ahead of myself sometimes so I hope that this makes sense but when you're in the void space within your life you are entering into the number nine cycle and number nine is the accumulation of all these experiences up until this point before you enter into the next cycle within your life and it is absolutely imperative for you to go into the void space for you to go into this darkness 
so that you can unpack before you move forward into the next the next space within your journey within your journey within your life now the number nine is very symbolic because the number nine is one of those numbers within numerology that has such a high spiritual vibration to it it is one of the numbers of total completion and total perfection number nine is number three which is total man like manifestation, effortless manifestation, that holy trine, we'll talk about that in a minute, times three. So you have manifestation times by manifestation to get the ultimate manifestation, which is number nine. Three times three equals number nine. Now, number nine is the end of the cycle. Literally, it's the end of a cycle, but when I sit with the number nine and when I spiritually sat, with my students within the sacred circle and I was preparing for them for our classes and I was looking at my life and examining everything when I saw the number nine intuitively I knew that yes it's the end of the cycle but to say it's the end of the cycle or completion does not do it justice enough it doesn't explain to it all the vibration the energy the messages that number nine holds within it and the best way that I can describe number nine on an energetic principle and on an energetic level is it's the number of unpacking that's why it seems like it is complete because the journey up until that point has got you to this point so that journey has completed but it doesn't end there sometimes in the English language we look at the word completion and we think okay this is an ending it's not an ending when you look at the number nine and when you look at numerology and we look at the energy of the universe and how energy works nothing really ever ends it always kind of unpacks itself before it starts the journey next that's why I say number nine is the number not of completion but of unpacking so basically what happens is that when you're in this number nine energy, which is the end of that, the end of that cycle, like the very end of that journey. So let's say you're on this, this road and each moment, number one, each moment, each number represents a moment. So you have moment number one where there's this new seed, that first step that, you know, that leap of faith that is that you're taking that calling out that manifesting this is what it is that I'm going to do that decision that you make and take that first step towards that decision okay so that's number one then number two we have union that's when you you took that first step and then you connect with someone right that's the energy of number two it's balance it's connecting with your complement right so then we have number three and that's when after the, those two things come together something manifests we have divine masculine divine feminine and then we have those things come together and something is being created something is manifested number three the holy trinity that's when we have the trine the trine is very important not only in energy energy wise and spiritual rot in spiritual what rot Blah, blah, blah. in spiritual ways it because it creates this um, it, but astrologically it creates this trine within the chart anytime when we see three we see a portal opening up it's like a womb it creates the space the door that opens into the next phase the next journey and that's when things manifest is when we have this holy this this trinity right at number three so each of these numbers to take a step back each of these numbers represents a moment within your life and if you look into numerology, you break down that number, you'll see the sim symbol of it, and you'll see the energy that that number brings, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five. Keep going. Each number represents a moment, an experience, something that has happened to you within your life until finally you get to number nine. Whew, I have to take a deep breath because I get so ahead of myself. Number nine is Trinity times three so manifestation by ma manifestation to create this end of the cycle this unpacking the number nine doesn't just appear out of thin air to get to the number nine you have to go through all of these experiences and as you go through all these experiences as you as you learned all of these lessons you are unpacking them once you get to your hotel room once you get to that end of the, the journey and you're examining it and you're looking at it and within that you are in a space where, okay, before I move forward, I need to go within myself and speak, spiritually seek the answers that it is that I'm looking for, spiritually ask questions to the answers that I need to ask questions to so I can better understand myself, so I can reconnect back to the, to the divine before I enter into the next stage within my life, within that cycle. Emphasis on the word cycle. We're going to put a pin in that and we're going to return back to it, right? So 
you're unpacking all of these experiences and what happens and what we don't like to talk about is how yes an experience provides a lesson and we see that as a blessing but even that blessing comes with a lot of emotion to it there's high emotions and there's low emotions there's things that as you unpack it it makes you feel depressed it makes you feel sad you feel you know, feelings of, damn, I feel bad that I had to leave that behind, but I knew that I had to do it. It was for my highest and greatest good. And you understand that on a spiritual, on a spiritual platform that it needed to be done, but still as a human being and as an emotional being, it feels bad to let that go. So as you're unpacking, you can see the strengths, you can see the weaknesses, and it triggers emotions. You're looking at all of what it is that you've experienced, all of these highs, these lows, these moments, and, <clears throat> and each one of those triggers a feeling it brings you back to a memory. That is a part of the journey that got you to the number nine. If it wasn't for each of those moments, you wouldn't have come to the number nine because number nine is the end of that cycle, the almost the end of the, well, it is the end of the cycle. So all of those moments that brought you to the number nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, now number nine are sitting in front of you and you have to examine and look at it all. Now, as you're unpacking those lessons, you are look, you're asking yourself, what did I learn? from this what can I do differently what would I have done differently what have I lost along the way what do I need to move forward and when you're in that feeling spiritually you don't mentally you might not even want to be there because in your mind you're ready for the next stage the next cycle but the universe knows better than you know for yourself and if you sat with yourself on a spiritual realm and you connected with your inner divine you would know that before you moved on to the next phase the next stage within your life within that cycle it is so important it is so imperative that you unpack you sit with that within that dark space and then you start asking those questions now if you look at the tarot and the major arcana within the tarot and I dive into and I study the the tarot for most of my life a good portion and chunk of my life um, number nine when you look at the major arcana what card is represented within the major arcana the number nine and it is the hermit card the hermit card is all about sitting within that dark space and internally seeking it's when you're asking those questions that you're looking for answers by asking questions that you might not have asked otherwise and what happens is that the hermit really kind of is sitting like, like he's legit sitting in the dark he's sitting in the dark for a reason being in that dark void space, it cancels out distractions. It cancels out noise. It makes you go into a space where you are without faith. You are without light. You feel disconnected. So on a spiritual realm, we can understand that. But again, on an emotional realm, on a mental realm, that can feel very lonely. It can feel very isolating. You can feel, again, disconnected from God. The, the hang, I'm sorry, not the hangman. The hermit is in the void space. He is the epitome of being in that void space. And that void space is the same feelings that I was talking about in the very beginning of this video or what he's experiencing now. He has to be totally in the dark. He has to sit in the dark in order to cancel out distractions, in order to unpack. In fact, the only thing that he has within him or the only thing that he has with him is this cloak of protection to protect himself from outside energy, outside entities, and one light. That light is him, his internal light that is guiding him or his angels that are guiding him or his, um, you know, the cycle that he's in in his life guiding him to ask these questions, to, in, to ask these questions internally but also externally. What is my purpose? Why am I here? I could have had all of these experiences and of course this hangman is, I'm sorry, why do I keep saying the hangman? But the hermit is very symbolic if you look at him. He has a stick for support. Why? Because his journey has been so long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each one of those moments gave him a lesson. Each one of those moments gave him an experience. And to do it alone, he has to lean on something for support. He has to lean on something other than just his strength alone, right? That's very important that we that I mention that and that I say that. He's also aged with his beard. And you don't even have to be a man or to be old to feel what he is feeling to experience what he's experiencing to feel old and wizened aged you're at the end of your life and you've experienced all of these things good and bad blessings and you know curses highs and lows and all of those experiences brought you to this point where you feel cold you feel isolated you feel almost abandoned and but you know that you're there for a reason but at the same time in a lot of ways you feel lost that is the hermit card and basically what happens during the shadow space 
space, this void space, is you are, you, you almost feel pressure, you almost feel the, the heat, the intensity of you being in this without. You being without is going to show you not only how strong you are, but it's also going to give you the answers to the questions that you might have been afraid to ask yourself. Um, why is that so important? Well, once he goes through this inner seeking, once he asks these questions, that's when the cycle starts over fresh. Number nine is literally the last number before we go into the double digits. We have all of what we need within the numbers to continue on with the rest of the journey, meaning that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is all we need in order to make all of the rest of the numbers. We're not gonna be introduced to another number moving forward with the rest of the numbers to infinity and beyond. We're going to use all of what we have with the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, the seven, and the eight, and the nine in order to create the rest of the numbers, right? What comes after nine? 10. So 10 goes enters into double digits, but we're using one and we're using zero, right? Why is 10 so symbolic as the next cycle, the next stage within the journey? Well, because we have one, plus zero, because that's 10, one and a zero together equals number 10, which means that something is now being born. Number one is taking you right back to the number one. 10 is taking you right back to the number one, this, the fresh start, that new beginning. You go right back from number nine to number one if you break it down, and it continues on as you move forward. Okay, so that's what it is that we're seeing as um, you go through the numerology. But when you go back to the tarot, it's the inner seeking of the questions that the hermit is asking in the number nine that takes us to number 10. What is number 10 within the major arcana? It's the wheel of fortune. Are you guys' minds blown yet or not? Nah? If your minds aren't blown, then you're not paying attention because this is some goodness that I'm giving to you right now, right? So number 10 within the major arcana is the wheel of fortune. And number 10 is the start of the new cycle. This is not um, a result of our actions, although sometimes it is. When we look at the wheel of fortune card, this card is connected to karma, fate, and astrological timing. These are things that, in a lot of ways, we cannot control. I don't want to say that we're a victim to it, but we have to succumb to it. We have to surrender to it. There are some things within our life that we can do all that we can to get to this number nine phase, and it doesn't matter. Like The lessons that we've learned, it's a direct result of our experiences, and a lot of those things, you know, we couldn't control them, but they're a part of our destiny, they're a part of our fate, they're a part of our karma in this life. Number 10 is the card of, or the major arcana, I'm sorry, the wheel of fortune and the number 10 um, within the major arcana is that card of fate and cycle. You cannot look at the wheel of fortune and be like, okay, this is when your luck changes. Yes, there is a, a certain component that the wheel of fortune does connect to a change in your luck for the good, for the better, but what this card really is saying is that the cycle continues on, karma moves forward, and you're moving into the next stage, the next journey within your life. What the nine of what the nine is doing, the hermit card is doing, is that he has unpacked once he got to the end of the journey, and in order to prepare for the next cycle, this next journey, this next phase within his life, that is a trine, that is where he's at. Even though it doesn't seem like it, the number nine is actually him sitting in the womb. That's why it's so dark right now. When you are in a spot right before you are born fresh, when a cycle opens up and the doors open up, literally number nine, right? When we have the, the, the number nine, we have a trine. When you see threes broken down into anything, you have a portal, a door that is opening up. That is manifestation, that is the birth, the process of we are ready to be born, but before we are born, we feel the crushing power, the immense energy around us that is forcing us in this space right now, this void space to evolve, to shift so that we can enter into the next stage within our life. We see this in the nine months when it takes a baby to, to fully develop within the womb. That baby is literally sitting in the dark. There is no light there. It's just receiving its nutrients. It's sitting in the dark. It's probably comfortable there, but for some of you guys, um, if you feel like you're in that womb stage and you're just kind of floating there in that abyss, like straight up hanged man mode, you know, can't really go anywhere, can't really do anything, just kind of like, 
you know, just dating, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word, but just receiving nutrients, receiving answers, receiving information, receiving guidance, receiving clarity for yourself. That's where you're at in that womb. And it's, you can't stay there forever. You're not going to stay there forever. In fact, you are so close to the end of that cycle of being born fresh, brand new, starting into the next stage in your life, into the next cycle, the number 10, the new beginning. So when you look at the number nine, you, we're seeing literally a womb, a person who's sitting within that womb, that darkened space, and the light that is at the end of the tunnel is you being born new with the information that it is that you've gathered while you were in this darkened space, while you were in that depression, while you were in that I feel lost. It doesn't matter if you've had the highest of the highs, the lowest of the lows. It makes sense sometimes if you experience a loss and then you enter into the void space, but it's not promised to you. It's all about cycles and karma and fate and astrologically what's going on in your life. And that's what was happening with me personally within my own life, within my own journey. I had just published a book. I hit all of these major milestones. Everything that I had wanted to achieve for the most part, everything that I wanted to experience within my life professionally and on a spiritual, in a spiritual way and mentally, I've had experienced. And I, in a lot of ways, I came to New Orleans right as I was entering into the void space. New Orleans is, and we say this all the time, you're called to the city for a reason. But a lot of us say like, it's like you're being in this womb, like you're sitting in this pressure cooker and you're sitting there and you're cooking and you're in this darkened space. It's a highly spiritual city, a very highly spiritual town. And I feel, I don't think that there's a coincidence that I was called to this darkened space. A lot of people around me in my life didn't understand it. I myself in a lot of ways didn't understand it, but I had to respond to that call as a spiritual being because that's a part of my journey. That's a part of my, my, my process here in life. So I'm sitting here in this space. I had just, and I knew, I knew like one of the last things I had manifested or one of the last things that I called out was at the end. And you guys, I, you know, like I've manifested everything in my life are things that I've called out that I knew. And I knew the last thing that I was going to do was going to write a book and publish it. And it was going to be a beginner's guide to the tarot. And I said it, I was like, that's, that's what, that's what I'm going to manifest. I'm going to go to New Orleans. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to publish it. And it's going to be about the beginner's guide to tarot. And as soon as I moved to New Orleans, I got approached for an offer. I wrote that book. I cranked it out. I was in that darkened space. And, but in that meantime, spiritually, I felt like it made sense. Like I knew that it was everything that I wanted to do and everything that I was called to do. And I was supposed to be doing it, but on a spiritual level, on an emotional level, on a mental level I felt in a physical level I felt very lost I was like okay what's next I kept calling out to the God to God I kept calling out to the divine I kept calling to the divine within me I was trying to work with my ancestors I was trying to work with my guides I was trying to work with my angels I was losing I don't want to say that I was losing my faith but I was really testing spirit I was really testing the universe I couldn't even manifest I, and I, you guys know I haven't actually actively tried to truly manifest anything major within my life. It's all been light things and it's not a bad thing. It's because I've been in that hermit mode. I had just experienced the best years of my life and the success that I had uh, achieved within that amount of time was stuff that I thought was gonna take me in my entire life. The things that I manifest and that I called out and I set intention for, I thought it was gonna take my entire life to achieve it. It didn't, it took like three years. Emphasis on the number three. So I get to the this stage within my life, the end of that cycle, and all of a sudden I'm plummeting into the dark. My inner demons start coming out. My in my childhood wounds. I'm becoming hyper aware of these generational curses that have been passed on, specifically within the women within my family. It's so interesting that the women in my family are the strongest, the strongest the strongest, the most gifted, the most magical, the most talented, and yet they have these, these, and I don't want to speak it more over my family. I don't want to, you know, call it back in because I'm actively working to release that right now, but they had such a burden that they were carrying. And as I was doing this work internally, I was not manifesting. I was cutting, I was cutting cords. I was in this number nine phase in this shadow, looking at not only my inner demons, but those of the women within my family and those within my family that were passed on. And I could see and understand the connection between why this thing happened to that person, why this happened to that person, why this person is the way that they are. I would see it and I would really, I would cry it. I would feel it. I would feel that burden and the depression that I was feeling on my heart. Not only was it them, the external, the people around me, 
within my friends too that were going through their own wounds, their own inner demons, and we were working through that together. But internally, I was experiencing that and the crushing depression and the weight of that. You guys, it was so dark. It was so dark. I have not been in a space like that in a very long time. This is the third time that I've been in that shadow void space within my life. It was tremendous. I will say that the best way for me to describe it is it was tremendous in the worst and the best ways possible. I don't want to say that I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy because everything happens for a reason. It's that cycle that goes on into our life. But I can feel myself, emphasis on the word cycle, I can feel myself being birthed new into this new, this next stage within my journey, within my life, okay? Now, um, I said a lot there, but yeah, number nine and the void is when you're in this void to give you guys hope and clarity because if you're in the void now, you may feel really disconnected from that. Just allow yourself to be within that darkened space. Reach out for help. Journal, get it out, connect, leave it down in the comments. The Bahati Vibe Tribe was created for a reason. It's not because I was trying to benefit from it, although I do benefit from it because I feel connected to you guys and I feel like we do have a soul family. But don't go through it totally alone. Take what you need to in that alone space, in that quiet space, honor that space. But when things get too dark and things get too dense and you start seeing things and feeling things, reach out to help. Um, therapy is one thing that, or counseling or a, a someone who is trained to help move you through those darkened space through those darkened spaces and it it's just so important to rely on each other we are not meant to be alone we are or, or to be so self dependent on ourselves independent that we're not connected with each other there's a reason why we're all connected there's a reason why it doesn't matter if you are you know Jesus Christ like you have to or this higher ascended being like we all need each other like we really do all need each other we're all supposed to be connected all energy is connected and unified okay so don't do it alone cry it out release it don't diminish it don't hold it back don't pretend like it doesn't exist ask yourself the questions ask yourself the questions in order to find the answers that is that your soul is speaking and seeking so that you can then go on the, um, and move on to the next cycle within your life, fresh, brand new, strong, enlightened. That is really important is that you're moving through enlightened. Not only is it for you, but it's also for the globe. There's a lot of consciousness right now that is shifting. So you that void space, that darkened space, it's so important for you to look, hold that light, that tiny light and ask those questions and journal every day. One thing that I was relying on mostly was my tarot cards and my guys, as disconnected as I felt from them in a lot of ways, because I was supposed to be disconnected from them, I was supposed to be quiet, I was supposed to be silent, I would work with the tarot a lot and I would just ask a question, what is it that I need to hear today? And I would take it day by day. I would not take on a whole chunk of things because the day alone was enough, okay? The day alone was enough. Um, but at the same time, give yourself even space away from your tarot card and ask yourself questions internally. Use your tools, but don't overly rely on them, okay? So I hope that that makes sense. Woo! I just have to hold on to my amethyst cave right now and just, you know, send all of you guys love and light because I know that it can be a lot. It can be a lot. I do want to tell you guys that that space is temporary. The void space is temporary. It's not going to last forever. Nothing ever does. But it's it's a pinnacle moment like it's it's an important moment within your life you're gonna look back at it just like i look back at all those other void spaces the, uh, the two other void spaces that i've entered in my life this is the third one that was just and it just uh, definitely as a spiritual worker i've always been called to this and called to this life and i just kind of honor it whether i like it or whether i don't like it it served its purpose and i i realized how messy it was i realized how low those points were but i didn't die from it aspects of me did die but i did not die and neither will you so, and if you ever feel those moments where you feel really lost, it is so important that you guys reach out because and ask for help. Um, it is not a sign of weakness for you to ask for help. It is not a sign of weakness for you to go to therapy. It's not a sign of weakness for you to connect with your friends and to tell them what's going on and to share what's going on in your heart um, because some of you guys really are cutting cutting out some cords. You really are fighting some internal demons that are really strong and it's not for you to do that alone, okay? So I'm sending you guys all of my blessings. I hope you can feel it. I know that I powered through this video and I, I know that it can be a lot and it can be overwhelming, but it was just time for me to talk about it. Everything serves its purpose um, as it 
will and as it should. Thank you guys so much for being patient with me as I was going through it personally. I know that in some ways um, people wanted a lot from me. They wanted more from the tribe. Know that my intention was to give to you more but I am a human being first and I am a spiritual person first. I have my spirituality. That's that is everything to me and I was going through it and I can't be of service to everyone else when I am being called to go into the void and I'm called to go into that hermetic mode just like you guys I can't compromise myself and I have to serve myself first just as much as you guys gain clarity and guidance from my videos and from me I have to gain that same clarity for myself and the only way that I can do that is to disconnect myself and to go through what it is that I'm going through meanwhile I was sharing and I was able to work my magic for my tribe within the apothecary within the with, with creating oils because that felt good and I felt called to do that but on a personal level when it came to me sharing and doing more with my videos and my content and information I was I could not do it it's just not what I needed to be doing at that time when I needed to be asking myself these questions and keeping myself in the dark so that I could be focused literally in the dark so that I could be focused on what it was that I was doing and what it was that I was called to do within that journey so that I can be a service to others and also to myself and to the divine because that is my motto that is the motto of Bahati life in service to others and the divine okay and divine was really calling me to go into a quiet space I will say that within that time relationships that I picked up and that I people that I've connected with they were going through it in ways that they would talk about and sometimes they wouldn't some of those relationships I've since it's the end of the cycle you know what I mean we've unpacked it it is what it is I've learned what I've learned but I'm moving forward into the next cycle within my life and that was something else that I've, I've experienced um, I was triggered by certain things um, my anxiety by things that have happened like wounds literally cycles karma like things that I could see within my ast astrology chart and could be explained within my natal chart that I would see kind of replaying in my present relationships things that I could control and things that I couldn't control the type of people that I was attracting what that relationship would look like so those were some things that I needed to examine in that darkened space I give gratitude to those relationships I give gratitude to those people but I also release them and I'm moving forward it's we all need each other we learn from each other and I release it with a loving heart with compassion and gratitude for the experience but I'm ready to move forward and if it wasn't for those experiences I wouldn't be who I am today and I just feel really called to say that and I feel really called to release that that was something that came to me recently at the end of my void space finally I heard from the divine angels came to me recently I don't think I'm crazy this is a true story but recently like literally like three days ago I heard from the angel like I heard a message from the angels and I was like oh my god thank god god because i hadn't heard from them in like six years i'm not even kidding six years for me personally i haven't heard from them like a message directly for me so and then the day after i then received a prophetic message within my own life where spirit god came to me as soon as i woke up and said give me your burdens almost like kali ma but it wasn't kali ma it was literally like this universal energy um but i'll talk about that in another video if you guys want me to talk about my visions that i've been having for myself I'm more than happy the only reason why I haven't shared them is because this YouTube channel or this YouTube yeah this YouTube channel is designed to help guide you and I'm like me sharing my own experiences my own visions how does it help you guys but now I'm realizing how much you guys really truly want to connect with me on a personal level and I'm so open to that now especially now because I was so private for so long but I'm coming out of the closet a little bit I'm I'm becoming more comfortable and it's just it's just time now okay so thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching this I know that it was very chatty I always kind of I'm like am I talking too much am I doing too much but it is what it is especially when I compare myself to other youtubers they keep their videos under 15 minutes and shorter but I have so much to share with you guys I'm a Virgo I'm very thorough and I want to give it to you all like I really want to give it to you all so let me know if you're in the void space have you ever been in the void space personally what was that like for you I know that for some of you guys you're so shy but please leave it down in the comments because I'm gonna read them all and I learn from that and I feel connected to you and I don't feel as alone in it um, it just it, it gives me so much to hear and experience what you guys are experiencing and 
I can see that you guys read each other's comments and you respond to each other and there have been a lot of friendships that have been, actually been created be, through the Bahati Vibe Tribe and that's what this was created for. So don't be shy when you share those experiences but I understand why you would be shy because it is a vulnerable space. But until then, make sure that you're subscribed to this video. Give this video a thumbs up. It, may, it does make a difference to me and the tribe and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!